So here we are at Abbey Road in London. Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing marvellously well. I'm sitting here with Kareem Fanous. How are you? Good, thanks, Warren. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. So you're the innovation manager at um, Abbey Road Red, which is an incubator for music tech? That's absolutely right, yes. And uh, yeah, it's our music tech incubation here at Abbey Road Studios. We run a six month program. And our general approach, our philosophy is that we're trying to help founders introduce the next set of universally adopted technologies into the music industry that add amazing value, whether it's to creativity or elsewhere in the, in, in the value chain. Um, in the same way that our predecessors did here at, at Abbey Road Studios in, in the Red Department with creations like the Red 17 desk and off-site at Hayes with creations like the TG12345 desk. So that's what we're philosophically trying to achieve, if you like. So you're saying it's a six month program? Yes, exactly that. It's a six month um, completely bespoke music tech incubation program. It's bespoken that we have an onboarding process which is similar for, for everyone, but we sit down with our founders. We have by that time got to know very well them and what they're trying to build, but we have a formal session where we kind of go, okay, here you are. Um, here's where you want to be. Here are the problems that you're facing. Here, here are the potential barriers to progress. Here are some potential opportunities. Here's how we, we can help. And um, then we construct a, a detailed program answering those and other strategic initiatives, if you like. So, so what are the sort of physical things happen? Do you pro do you provide office space for them? Do you provide? Give us some. I suppose most importantly, how does anybody even get into this program? Two good but slightly separate questions. So to yeah. your first point, um, yeah. we can't provide office space. It's a quirk okay. of being in the amazing fact that we're in Abbey Road Studios, right? Because as sure. you, you've walked the corridors, you know, you, you've been around and, and there's no place even to store a lot of gear, let alone kind of yeah. have, give, give people offices. But to that point, we, we really like our, our founders when they have the attitude, and, and this is natural to them, of, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want an office space. We want to be out and about. We want to be having sure. meetings. But in terms of kind of physical value adds if you like or value adds we can give to them from the amazing walls that that we we're lucky to be inside with them they can come and hang out in the restaurant work from there have meetings there um, do calls if you like from there we do have meeting rooms which we can kind of give them usage of every now and then we find they like to be downstairs just sort of uh, in the wonderful hustle and bustle that it is the restaurant because you know, you can be there sort of working away or, or on a call one one minute and then an orchestra will walk in on a, on a break and bring this incredible energy with it. So it's quite inspirational for them. Um, the other sort of uh, value adds from, from the building, if you like, uh, we give them as part of the program a day in Studio 3 and a day uh, in our gatehouse studio and they can do what they like you know as long as it's adding value to their process or the incubation um, and process so for example they can put on investor events uh, round tables um, they can put on um, showcase performances and a bunch of other stuff so that's a really lovely value add that we can give them and then our showcase event every year in Studio 2 the Abbey Road Red demo day is a really lovely occasion where where, you know, we're in, we're in that room which hosted the transformation of popular culture, if you like, let alone um, incredible approaches to turning technology on its head, introducing new technologies, and we're able to give the room to our founders and, and a very uh, uh, specifically chosen stakeholder or audience, if you like, um, across the business, um, and, and from, from creative to investment to, 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 to labels and more, and they get to, you know, be in there and, and uh, talk about what they've been building. So that, those are the kind of physical value adds, if you like. And what about the selection process? Are people applying to you? Are you going out searching for them? Or a combination of both? That's a really good question. We're sort of um, very, very devoted to our, our scouting process, which is to sort of be learning and um, figuring out where trends are going and who's doing what. And, and that's, a, that's a lean in and lean back process, if you like. We lean in as in we're constantly dipping into resources, looking at what's happening, studying, thinking. But we, just, we, we work very hard to establish a network of people between our, um, our board members here and at Universal Music Group and our teammates at Universal and then stakeholders and partners across the industry, um, from labels to publishers, big tech media and more. Um, and we, we just 
create relationships with, with the hope that if you know we're providing value back to them, that they, they will bring interesting stuff to us as well. So, yeah, it's a bit lean in and it's a bit lean back, if you like, with lean in before the lean back, if that makes sense. <laughs> Do you expect a certain amount of ideas? Have they been fermented to a certain degree before you even get involved? Or can people come to you with pretty much like, here's my idea, and then you help place maybe team members they need? Or is it, again, a case-by-case case situation? It, that's a really good question. It's it's quite specific, actually, our approach oh, to okay. that. Because of what we can offer and, and where we sit and, and who we have on our team, if you like. So what we found works best is, is when ideas have been um, taken past the initial concept mm. into a basic prototype, um, or MVP, if you like, and and the founders are thinking about trying to overcome certain things or develop um, the, the the idea and, and, and basic product more uh, and launch it into a marketplace. That That's where we think we can provide the most helpful value that importantly doesn't distract them from their mission, but does add to what they're trying to do with everything that, that we can call on um, to help them um, develop the final bits of it and launch it into the market. So typically there'll be posts for friends and family or initial funding um, building a prototype out, really cool idea that 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 that, that we think is differentiated. Um, ideally, has some IP that they're going to develop, or you know, have 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 uh, conceived, if you like, uh, and 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 are going to build out, and um, then want to launch that into a marketplace. That's where we can help the most. We have found, so right. we are quite specific in in how we pick that. And then I suppose a lot of people watching this who might have ideas are probably going to ask this question. It's probably one that wouldn't normally be asked. What do you get out of it? <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> that's a hard question that I've never actually been asked. Uh, but but do you mean personally or Abbey Road Studios? Abbey Road. I should have what's, thought. what's the business relationship? Yeah, absolutely. That's that. So it's not as hard as I thought. I, I thought you were going to you were going to ask oh, me I can personally. put you on that as no, well. I'm really, yeah, not, I, not ready I, I, for I that want, one. I want to get it. <laughs> I wanted to get into your background as well. I have a whole set of questions on that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, well, the, the, the serious answer and, and to, to the question you asked is um, we are, as I said, kind of introducing new technologies into the industry in w which gives us a purpose and which we absolutely love and adore and, and we want to help um, grow and navigate uh, um, sometimes the instabilities that are that are presented by technology and, and to turn that on its head and actually make it value adding, um, whether it's in terms of creativity or engagement, um, data um, and, and other things. Um, and um, we do um, take a very, very small amount of equity in the company. Mm. Um, um, so there is a simple value exchange, uh, um, but that's not really the purpose. The purpose is for us to be positioning Abbey Road Studios, helping mm -hmm. our teammates at Universal Music Group be on the leading edge of technological change, bring these technologies in and um, developing them together, and then pre also presenting those technologies back out into the wider industry. That's really the goal. That, that's what we want to do. So you're currently mentoring or incubating 19 businesses. Is that correct? I'm really glad to say that's not correct. Okay, um, how many is it? But really happy to say we've done that over s seven years now. <laughs> so, oh, okay, so 19 over 17 years. Yeah, seven might years. not be sitting up straight, if you like. It yeah. might, might be needing some yeah. time off. It was 19 in one year. We, we aim to put through four, between four and eight in a year. You okay, know. Um, cool. We tend to find it fluctuates because we're lucky to be able to look for quality and we don't have a, ro a, a cohort model, if you like. We have a rolling model, in which case, to your earlier question about when you take a, a business business on or founders on mm -hmm. um, we can grow relationships over time and that's part of the special approach we have and and the, and freedom is the wrong word maybe the space we're given to to bring that quality in and we're held to task over the quality of course but we're able to develop relationships over time meet people and if it's too early you know we keep in touch and and we 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 we, we sort of help them sometimes uh, or, or at least just say come back to us when when you've got a, a more mature idea and product so we we do that and um that means we don't put through more typically than than uh between four and eight in a year sometimes it can be smaller amount than that um if the context the situation the you know the wider sector conditions aren't right um and sometimes it can be quite a few one day it'd be great to get to 19. We'd just have to grow the team a little bit before then. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Maybe this number is incorrect as well. Um, your network is nearly 30 men mentors? 
Yeah, no, that's the correct number. So that's to, to what we were talking about of, mm -hmm. of our, you know, what is Abbey Road Red? Where do we sit? Where's the lucky position we have, where, where, which is kind of inimitable, if you like, in terms of the value we can bring. So we have the Abbey Road situation, we have the universal situation and support, and then we have a great mentor network that we've um, been building over the years, if you like. And, and these mentors come from all parts of the music industry, but also wider technology and content and, and legal industries and more. So we have people who have sold companies um, who can help with advice on that piece, for example. Um, brilliant legal minds who can help with the IP piece, protection or, or, other, or other needs. Um, innovation specialists who are, who are able to help guide thinking on how to prepare to scale. You know, you might build something and it might work really well, but scaling is a whole different question. And so they've been there and done that. So, so and more across the mentor network. So that, that's our, our, our network of mentors who basically commit loosely to giving us their time and minds. But what we found, so they'll see everyone that comes through the program who wants to meet with them. But what we found is really lovely is they go on to develop really long relationships over time and, and end up working together. So, so that's great with the mentor network. And then um, as Abbey Road Studios, we, we, we have a, a remit to interface with the whole industry, which again is really lovely for us because we can create contacts and, and over time and relationships and reach out to people um, across the whole music industry and the wider technology and content industries and more and just sort of look for some advice, uh, if you like, for the startups when we feel the match is right. I. So your the legal side obviously is a big help. Uh, do you get involved also in helping raise funds for them or at least pointing in the right direction? We do. We try. We try and do that. So our model is uh, equity, like we explained, a small amount of equity in exchange for the program with mm -hmm. our wider goals of bringing amazing new technologies into the business. Sure. So we ch have chosen not to invest um, as a matter of course, if you like, because we feel that it, it's a nice sign when founders have brought... Um, Amount, you know, or at least shown the tenacity to just scramble if they need to and get that initial funding. So long answer to your question, I'll, I'll shorten it for you. Basically, we do help them with the investment piece, but by introducing them to our network. So right. we'll introduce them to our investor friends and get their advice. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll kick the tires on investment decks with them. We'll, we'll help develop that piece for them, then introduce them into our wider investment network. And also the demo day in Studio 2 is a great opportunity to invite investors into the room too and say, come and enjoy the night and give the startups an opportunity to pitch to them. I'd like to know a little bit about you. What is your background before you came to Abbey Road? Thanks for asking, Warren. That's uh, <laughs> so it's a big question for all of us, big isn't it? Big question. Like, I feel like we we need to have a long chat about about everything you've done as well. It sounds 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 fascinating. Oh. Um, but uh, my, mine is, you know, I'm, I'm a music obsessive. Uh, I just live through music, really. Um, you know, it's it's kind of without over over laboring the point. You know, sometimes you can't put two feet in front of each other, but you listen to some music and suddenly you can. You know, it's uh, it's 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 so important to me and always has been. And uh, before Abbey Road. Um, I have spent um, um, many years at, a, at a, a company called Music Ally. So um, that's a digital information and strategy company in the music sector. And I was really lucky there because from the various roles I had, I, I sort of learned my way into just studying the technology and music industries and how they interface, but also moved into working more with founders and startups on consultancies and research and things like that. So that was a really lovely grounding with me to bring the combination of that and, and the love of music and know my way around sort of the creative and engineering aspects all into the role that is Abbey Road Red. Where did the original idea for this version of Red, because obviously Red is, you know, famous for, as we're talking about, console, innovation and so many other things. Where did this original idea to get into this tech site come? Yeah, well, I mean, just to, to tell you where we got the name from, the, the RED team, R-E-D-D, -D, stands sure. for Record Engineering Development Department, and they were responsible for some of those incredible innovations. But mm -hmm. then in the history like, of the building, like, you know, stereo, the first recordings were done Album here. Line. Absolutely, yeah. ADT, Ken Townsend, yeah. you'll be very familiar with, with, with you know, the modern chorus effect. So we were looking back at our innovation history and just trying to understand how to, to sort of um, acknowledge it and pay tribute to it, but also what's new that we can do here to help you know, innovation in the industry. And at the same time, the team was seeing a lot of innovators outside of the building who were having incredible ideas, but weren't necessarily able to bring them 
to a market or, or just have the right understandings to navigate certain areas of the industry, whether it's understanding how licensing works uh, and, and, and even just how internal business units um, within the value chain might work and the problems they might be facing and, and how to answer them. So we just thought, look, we're sitting here in this incredible position where we can take this knowledge outwards to people. Um, and the idea for launching the incubator uh, was born from that, really, and um, we're seven years in. So I, I think on the site, this is a nice little phrase here, incubator, not accelerator. Yeah. How would you explain that to us? Very uh, important part of our character and our, our differentiation, if you like. And there's a place for both. There's a place for everything. But for us, with what we've described um, so far, you know, in, in our chat, we found that the best way to deploy that and give founders space um, was to create a long program, which is completely bespoke. You know, we call it a, a group hug, if you like. Um, you know, we have friends who, who've referred to it as fostering. If it, but, but the point is we're allowed to bring founders into this program, have intense sort of bursts of thinking and deploying ideas and, and kicking the tires and putting them in front of people and getting feedback. But then with making it an incubation program that lasts for six months, we can take a breath, we can sit back, we can let them breathe and then and then come back. So yeah, we felt that six month incubation was really what we needed to do rather than a quick boilerplate acceleration program, if you like. Has there been instances or necessity to extend that six month? Happy to say no, actually, because we've done our job and it's really sad. Like some of the brilliant um, technologies you're going to see today and, and um, the founder you're going to speak to later uh, with their co-founder, as an example, is have rolled off the program now. And it's it's just so sad to say goodbye, you know, because you really go through stuff all together and, and, you know, you have experiences and you build great friendships. But, um, you know, we... Uh, to your question, we've not found the need to go past six months because if we do our job right and we've done designed the program properly, then they should be past that point where they can just take it to the next level themselves. Um, and we do stay involved. You know, we've always said it's like a family uh, and, and we look out for our alums after the program and we try and look for experiences at the casual crossroads, if you like, and we'll always put them in touch with people and opportunities. But we've not found the need to extend the program yet, which is which is great. So what is the dynamic? Because there's two of you that work specifically for Red, but then you have a board of 11 people um, in the industry. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I need to do the board count again, but I think it's a bit more at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. But the dynamic is such that we're really lucky to have sort of two people full time on this. So uh, myself and our colleague, Anthony, our program manager at Red, um, we're full time on, on this uh, mm -hmm. amazing opportunity and, 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 and incubation um, program. But what we're able to do is we sit in the building, we're able to talk to our amazing colleagues across all the different sort of uh, functions from sitting next to Mirek, you know, and, and just running ideas by him, for example, as we do, um, to just checking in with our with our engineering teammates and saying, what do you think? Could this work? Could it, could it, could it not work? What do you reckon? Uh, and, and more. And, and so we have that amazing situation. We have a very, very, uh, I was going to say amazing again, I don't really know, incredible, if you like, a board um, composed um, of a senior uh, management um, at Abbey Road Studios and at Universal Music UK. So between our situation here in the studios, that very, very amazing board, and, and you've got specialists in every capacity. So everything from um, audio products, digital uh, operations through to on the label side, COO, uh, 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 leaders in commercial strategy, business development, technology, um, and more. And we can not only uh, audience insights and, you know, I I'd love to be able to go through every every person and tell you tell you their amazing strengths. But the point is, we can access those minds and they they keep they hold they're the people who keep hold us to task, if you like, what I was saying earlier, which is good. Um, and we can access their minds, their knowledge, their experience, their challenges um, to understand what technologies we should be looking for and also their help uh, when it comes to the program and working with the startups. But there's, an, there's a door opening process that happens where our board members 
expect us to bring stuff that is of a high quality and uh, suits the needs that we've all observed together. When we do that, they're really happy to lean in and give us their time and the founders their time. So we're able to open that door quickly. Um, but it stretches past that, it, it, you know, that unique situation here and with our board, we work closely with our management colleagues here um, across all our different functions from brand and comms to partnerships and, 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 and events and more on doing stuff with the startups and on the universal side, then across the business units where we're able to talk to label marketing leads and teams, um, strategists, insights and more to just take, put startups in front of them and, and get advice, you know, licensing advice uh, and much more. So um, there's that. And then there's the rest of the industry that we interface with. So I might say this is quite altruistic. I mean, it's very, it comes from very, pure ideals i can't see it as a necessarily a financial business model in as much as like you're going to make tons and tons of money out of it mm. it's more of a case of like getting in there and doing the right thing and maintaining the idea of the reality i should say of abbey road being involved in innovation it is a that's a really nice way of putting how we feel because we're in such a privileged is, special position and and yeah. and to your point you know it's people, not aggressive at all. Pe yeah pe people have asked before you know what are your KPIs in your milestones and of course we have them right mm -hmm. it's like do well incubate well mm -hmm. um, put certain number of startups if we can find them through and 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 um, but beyond that we don't have like a very rigid set of uh, deliverables if you like which mm -hmm. is nice it, it kind of almost makes me sound naive but it's not meant like that at all like I say we're, we work ex incredibly hard and we're held to task um, but at the same time there is this sort of romantic philosophy which sit, mm -hmm. sits on underneath it all um, and really is what it's about but without sort of getting too mushy if you like that the fact is we're here to help the industry and it's a case of sort of all ships rising um, w with the tide a, a little bit we're trying to help that tide rise and bring technologies in which are going to add value to creatives musicians studios artists um, the rest of the value chain from engagement, marketing, distribution, and, and, and more. So for us, that's what we're here to do. It's not numbers. It's not uh, equity. It's not um, exits, although it's very nice to have them when they happen. It's we have a mission, and that's when we look back at our past and um, our, our legacy of innovation here and what it's produced as a result. You know, new genres, changing culture, enabling culture. Uh, making people happy, <laughs> you know, making artists happy <laughs> as well as the fans. Um, and doing the right thing. That's what we're here to do, yeah. And But let's, at the same time, it's going to lead to nice things, right, in terms of when you look back at your milestones and, and, um, and, and, and um, the uh, material achievements, if you like. They, but we do just believe, look, try really hard, work really hard, try and do everything better, try and do more better, if you like, and that's your target. And that tends to help everyone. Well, we're going to, um, we're going to talk to some of the people that you've helped launch products with, um, starting with uh, Voclia, is that correct? Voclia, yes, Voclia, Voclia yeah. They, they have uh, the Voclia doubler, uh, uh, voice to MIDI software controller system is um, a really special um, piece of uh, technology that was created by George Wright. And we have ICANN here from George's team today. It's basically software that uh, will enable you to vocalize sounds. And in real time, it turns those sounds into uh, actual synth outputs. So to explain that, um, it needs inputs, obviously, and I can. We'll show you all of that. But it, it, it's very clever because it does really complex stuff very quickly in real time and makes it feel very easy to use. But to to just give you an idea of what what we're talking about, you load up the drum module, you do a bit of you know initial tweaking, and it learns your voice a little bit, and then you're literally boom boom boxing. So you're going boof boof, and in real time, it's uh, punching out uh, the drum sounds as they should be. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give you a demo of that, and I can's gonna explain a little bit. Of about how it works and then uh, we've also invited in a co-founder of Zone, Elisa, who's going to tell you about their amazing Metaverse platform and um, what they're building um, for Metaverse music experiences. So yeah, absolutely delighted um, that they're going to be here in a minute to talk to you and, and thank you for the opportunity as well. Amazing.
Well, let's talk to Ike. So I'm basically here to talk about uh, our voice to MIDI software, uh, Doubler 2, and um, we're a company, uh, our name is Voclia, and we're based in South London. And um, Where in South London? Bermondsey. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, Bermondsey. And um, the founder of Voclia, uh, George, uh, he was very involved with Abbey Road, uh, I think coming through the ranks of Abbey Road Red and receiving all that great support uh, from this place. And uh, they released, we released a version one of the software, maybe, uh, I think it's been four years now, three or four years ago. And it was very basic. All you could do is kind of um, the basic functionality of the more advanced software that we have now. And this is the kit. So this is the Doubler 2 Studio kit. Go for it. And what uh, comes in the kit basically is the software, which is what you can see on screen here. Uh, we're at version 2.1 right now. We've had some great recent updates that I'll also be talking about. And it works with a custom USB microphone, um, uh, which uh, a lot of people say uh, bring the best results. But with Doubler 2, another am something amazing that the team were able to do is now anyone can use the software with their own dynamic mic and sound card, basically. And what uh, the other thing that comes in the box is Ableton Live Lite, which is why we do a lot of our demos using Ableton as opposed to other DAWs, because when you purchase the Doubler 2 Studio Kit, you also get a free copy of Ableton Live Lite, and this is especially useful, like I said, for people entering the world of music production for the first time, and it gives them a great excuse to learn a great DAW. And all you have to do is arm your channel, and uh, I've loaded up a pad in Ableton here, I'll just... And then you can, when you arm it and you have this pitch active, you can start to sing melodies. So for example, So I'm not the best singer and it definitely takes more practice uh, to use this properly, but you can do things like switch the octave up. And um, I'll just show the MIDI being recorded there in real time, actually, so I'm just recording. You can, there are various controls, so you can like make it increase the stickiness and that makes it harder and harder to switch between notes. And even if you're not a great singer, what really helps is it allows you to lock to a key. So right now I'm singing the C, a key of C minor. It's harder to voice ideas when you're not hearing some chords in the background. So I'll lay down some chords uh, also and improvise over that. But basically, so without playing an instrument, you get some MIDI down. And a lot of people say to this, um, you could already do this for years in some DAWs, you know, for example, in Ableton, when you have a piece of audio, you can right click and it says convert audio to MIDI. So singing audio, recording audio, and then converting it to a MIDI file. But it's not working in real time. No, it's not working in real time. It's not locked to a scale, mm -hmm. and you get all these crazy messy notes that you have to spend a lot of time cleaning up, and mm -hmm. it's, it's not real time. Like when you have the response real time, that also changes how you're singing and how you're expressing yourself, and just getting that, uh, being able to like sing a synth in real time really opens up a lot of creative doors. When I was when you were first explaining, I was thinking yeah. to myself that um, I'm blanking on the name of the song, but it was a Phil yeah. Collins song where he sent the horn arrangement idea to the Earth, Wind & Fire horn arrangement yeah. just by going ba da ba ba while playing yep. drums. Yeah. You know, now you could he could bring up a brass sound and sing the idea. And go, exactly. Oh. So the way the beat functionality works is you turn off the pitch here, you mm -hmm. have triggers here, and you train sounds. So I'll come to this kick. So this is just a kick I have loaded up here in Ableton. And so... Sorry. I'll clear the text. So what you do is you train the software. It uses AI to understand the sound that you're repeating. So I'm going to just... So now I have a kick. Uh, I have this sound here, my butt sound, and you can choose which MIDI note it's mapped to. And this is why Ableton is a great uh, partner for this software also because you have uh, the clear the drum rack right here and it shows which MIDI note is where and you can drag in your own sample. So I have this kick here. And now with this trained, 
for example, and I'll do the same with a snare. I have a rim shot loaded. I'll clear the takes. And now if I go back to play, maybe I'll just quickly record. I'll just have a hi-hat loop here. I'll just duplicate that a couple times over. There's a bit of latency because of the screen record, but... So you can basically lay down a drum groove, and it's... A lot of people write drums like this, basically, just like typing them in. And this can lead to everything being too quantized and too straight. This allows you to kind of give your own groove and feel to the drums. Of course, again, I'm mentioning there's a little bit of latency right now because we're running with a higher buffer size because of the screen record. Now I'm going to launch this pad again, and with chords enabled. And I'm just going to use an incredible feature from Ableton here, the captures, just to get the MIDI I was just singing. So you can see once you sing those, you get, you get all your chord MIDI here, basically. And there are a couple different voicing presets for the style of chords you're going to get. And the idea is that you get all this MIDI down uh, for your chords, and then you can just process it. You can cut up loops you like. For example, if I find a quick loop here. And that could be the way I start my song, is just get, getting this chord progression. And so, also, we get comments from a lot of musicians that are kind of saying, like, this is cheating, and like, this is, um, you have to put, you, this is a way to cheat and like, not put in the hard work, not learn an instrument. So there's a bit of uh, hate online for this kind of stuff sometimes. But the way we see it as really a tool to allow people who haven't, uh, produce music before to just uh, get into it, start writing their songs, find their chords, find the key they're going to work in, and then just improvise melodies over it, do beats over it, and then just get it, just dive right into the production process without having to uh, worry about a lot of things. It's, a, it's not cheating. It's, it's kind of the idea of like replacing learning an instrument because like um, a lot of people associate music with knowing and learning and honing your skills mm. on an instrument so anything other than that can kind of be intimidating or kind of play into the ideas of like maybe ai and stuff kind of taking over music which is something being discussed a lot these days too and like yeah i think it just frees up creativity yeah I don't exactly see what, any other way of looking at it yeah um unless somebody's coming from perspective of being threatened by something exactly like yeah. That's <laughs> a whole other discussion but yeah because if you free up the creativity then yes, it, it it allows for pure invention. You know? Yeah. And Traditionally, people use pedals and um, pedals to like modulate sounds and stuff. But here we have these CC dials where you can map vowels to change parameters. So I'm just going to go back to this uh, chord sound I had. So I have that. And in the assign tab, what I can do is I can map this ENV. So ENV is envelope, so that's how loud your voice is. So you can see if I sing quieter, it's getting, it's lowering as I sing quieter and increasing as I sing higher. So I'm just gonna map this to the filter cutoff. So now the cutoff will open.
and you can control how much is opening that parameter by increasing uh, these parameters here. And there's just lots of ways to control this is its sensitivity, how long it takes to open up. And the same, so that's the envelope one, that's the simpler one because that's just to do with volume. But what you, you can also use are uh, the vowels you're singing. So I'm just going to. So I've, what I've done is I've mapped the E sound to the space knob in Ableton. So as I s sing with more of an E, there's going to be more reverb in the sound. So. It's a whole new way if your hands are busy or uh, if you're playing an instrument or uh, you just want things to be changing while you're singing, you can map to any of these vowel characteristics or the loudness of your voice um, without even recording the pitch. You can just do a session, for example, I'll have, the, I'll have these chords playing and I'll just use the vowels I'm singing, not to record melodies or chords, but just to change the effects while it's going. So. I can't thank you ever so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad. Really nice to meet you again. Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Here with Elisa from Zone. How are you? Very good. How are you? I'm good. So you're, you, you came up under the Red um, Incubator program. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. We just finished. Um, oh, so, you did? Yeah. It's been like a six-month ride with uh, the, the team, and it's been great. And, yeah, we just... We're just done with it, coming out of it with uh, some great results, I would say. Fantastic. Now, off camera, you were trying to explain it to me. So let's get it on camera so you can really understand. Now, it is based inside of the metaverse and you're taking artists and giving them opportunities to really kind of interact with fans in a, in a particularly unique way. Yeah, exactly. So what we're building is pretty much one of the only mobile metaverse applications. Um, most metaverses you know are browser-based, and then there's a couple more like gaming-focused applications such as Roblox. But what Zone's doing is it's taking metaverse building abilities and making it as easy as possible. Like I haven't seen a builder that is as easy to use and intuitive as ours. Um, and then also merging that with social media features. So somebody can have a profile, some can, somebody can have followers, um, you can chat and meet other people and inside this immersive space. So, so it's a whole new world, though. You've developed a whole new thing. So it's not, it's not inside of Metaverse itself. It is its own. Ah, interesting. What, yeah. Is it officially launched? Um, we're currently in open beta. Okay. So you can test it, but, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of sign-up only right now. Oh, okay. Interesting. Right, I can show it today. Yeah, look, show <laughs> it to us. All right. So I have my profile here and it looks very much like something you might be used to, so it should right. be very easy for you to navigate. Um, what you see here, these little previews of spaces, are all 3D spaces that you and others can enter. So I could say, oh, um, I'm going to invite my five best friends to this cloud zone, so we call it, uh, at 6 p.m., and we're going to talk about, I don't know, croissants. Because <laughs> I'm a fan of croissants, too. Um, yeah, and so you can you can build your own spaces and then invite others to it, basically. Right. Um, maybe we can go into the most exciting part. So we also have the community spaces, which are currently curated by us. So this is when you said we, you build a whole new world. We actually did. We built a couple 3D worlds, um, okay. much bigger spaces, as you could see. The personal ones were the small rooms, and these ones are very, very large, so it, they can fit hundreds of people. And when we enter them, it's where it gets the most interesting, I would say. You have your own avatar. So in terms of use cases, what, what you can do is like we work with artists from Universal, for example, where we say, right. okay, we're going to build you a space that is a digital version of your album artwork, if the okay. album artwork is something, you know, like the famous Tame Impala of course. room? Yeah. We could build this in 3D and then Tame Impala could say, oh, 
let's invite our fans, let's put our avatars in there. Um, and you can have a, a digital performance of the artist, for example. So that's how it looks when you're into the, inside the space. And then the next feature we have built out is the builder. So this one's interesting for smaller artists because um, any artist can say, well, I want to make a metaverse experience for my fans, but it costs like $100,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be able to do it in like a fortnight or something like that. Um, so they can come in here and they can say, oh, let me, let me build something. You know, it's really easy. You don't really have a big learning curve. You just kind of drag in things. Let me see. So I like this red chair here. Let's put it here. You can turn it around. Now let's turn it like this. Okay. And then you could say, oh, I also want uh, a plant or anything, you know, and, um, and then you, you're building your own little space. So it's really easy. This took like, what, 30 seconds. You hit finish, you can publish it, and then you can say, okay, who can enter this? Is it everybody? Is it just my friends? Is it just my fans? Is it just certain people that are holding mm -hmm. a collectible that I sell for $3? Mm -hmm. um, is it people that have purchased my latest record? Who knows? Um, so, yeah, you can you can really make it a special experience as well, and then you can host events, and it pops up on your on your feed here. But it's great, obviously, for artists. I, I understand that you can create your own world. You can make it so it's exclusive to fans that maybe sign up for a certain way. But presumably, I mean, it's more open than that. You're, you're trying to get people from all walks yeah. of life and age groups and everything to be involved in it. Yeah, the hope is really that the next generation of people, instead of going to TikTok or mm -hmm. a Roblox, is going to use this application right. because we're just trying to make it very, very user friendly and giving it something that Roblox maybe doesn't have, which is more of the social element, um, giving it a feed where you can post videos of your own avatar, um, working on things like bringing yourself into this using motion capture. So we're working with a partner called Move AI. Um, where you can just plop your iPhone on a on a tripod and then record yourself moving. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine you built your own little room and then record yourself doing some kind of dance move, if I'm thinking about those like TikTok influencers that are mm -hmm. like dancers, you could um, you could bring yourself in into this virtual space as however you want to look like an avatar. So when does it launch? Uh, we're going to launch publicly end of April. In the meantime, people can sign up for the, the beta version? Yeah, exactly. They can just go to our website, zone.gg, and then sign up there, and we'll send a, uh, an email when it's ready. Mm -hmm.